What is going on guys? Welcome to your 14th Java game development tutorial. And in this tutorial, if you've been following along with the last couple tutorials and you saw that animation play out, then you probably noticed something kind of wrong with your animation. Now the code worked fine, but whenever you watch your animation, you could see that it was flickering kind of. Like the screen would show up and it would blink like it was supposed to, but the it would look like the face was flickering on and off. And if you're wondering why this flickering happens, it has nothing to do with your code, kind of. But what happens is whenever we're drawing to our screen using our Java program, what the user sees is what you're drawing as it's being drawn. So whenever it's drawing and it doesn't have the whole image displayed, it shows through it. So you kind of get this flickering um, images on your screen and pretty much what happens is if there's too much flickering you start to get seizures so what we want to do is take away this flickering and if you're like alright how the heck can I get rid of flickering this is a pretty big problem for me to handle well fortunately people have been working on this uh, for a long time and they found a perfect way to get rid of it what they use is something called a buffer and what a buffer is is pretty much instead of drawing right to the screen it would draw to kind of like an image that isn't to the screen and then it will copy that whole image over so instead of drawing directly on your screen you could just copy everything at once and bam everything is already right there you don't have to do all your work for the user to see you just copy 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 everything's right there to access for you so what that pretty much is called buffering and this works absolutely awesome and then after this they found an even better way they're like alright what if we had two buffers so instead of even having to copy that what we'd have is two images drawn separately and we would just point to one image then when the other one was ready point to another image and when that one was ready point to the other one and bam this is what's called page flipping now all of this is pretty confusing and to write all this code I mean we can do it but it would uh, take up a lot of space so thankfully Java already wrote all this code for us and it's called a buffer strategy and all we have to do is include some simple built-in methods in the buffer strategy class that's already built in the Java and bam we get rid of flickering uh, tearing whatever you want to call it the one problem really is we have to rewrite our entire screen class in I mean it's gonna be a lot of work but in order to get rid of all that flickering if you don't want flickering in your game which you don't because it would suck um, you need to kind of rewrite your entire class and that's why you need to include these imports buffer strategy and buffered image and pretty much all of these imports that I have right here so I'm gonna minimize this and we're gonna begin writing our final screen manager class now if you're wondering all right, what happened in the screen class we're gonna get rid of that completely and replace everything so let's go ahead and write a new class don't forget to use your imports and I'm gonna walk you through how to write the perfect screen class we're gonna call it screen manager so again let's uh, crack our fingers and get ready to code the first thing we want to do just like the screen class is go private private graphics device VC and what this is going to be is a uh, object to our video card right here through graphics device and for some reason whenever I play Call of Duty for like 14 hours I type weird so I'm probably gonna make a bunch of errors in this but I'll fix it for you don't worry about it now let's go ahead and make a constructor for this so public screen manager or whatever you name your class it doesn't need to be the same as mine and what we need to do is pretty much graphics environment e equals let me just copy that again equals graphics environment dot get uh, info dot right there get local graphics environment and what this pretty much does is get all your graphics um everything that's on your graphics card and set your video card and set it equal to the environment 
get default screen device so there's a bunch of stuff that your graphics card can do and we wanted to point to the monitor so now our graphics card object VC has access to the monitor and let's just write a little note give VC access to monitor screen same thing but why not be repetitive right so now what we're going to want to do is built into your graphics card here's here's a little history of your graphics card that you need to know built into your graphics card there's a bunch of display modes that are already built in there the problem is our program doesn't know what graphics card what computer this is going to be on it doesn't know what graphics card this program is using and it doesn't really know what display mode is compatible with the program so what we need to do is get all the display modes from the graphics card and we're going to compare them against display modes that we have preset and we're going to match them up and when one's compatible we're going to use that one so the first thing we need to do is get all the display modes from your graphics card so let's go ahead and make a method public let's go ahead and make a little get all compatible DMs for display mode so anyways public display mode this is array it's built in get compatible there I spelled it right display modes and what this method is going to do is get all your compatible display modes so I'm gonna make sure I spelled it right there we go and all you need to do is this return video card dot get it should be right here get display modes right there I see it and as you can see that popped up because it was already a built-in method and what this is going to do is it's going to get all of your display I probably spelled that wrong right there it's going to get all of your display modes that are built in your graphics card and we need to write this because everyone that runs our game is going to have a different graphics card so that's why we need to do all this code so anyways it's going to take all of those things all of those display modes and store them into an array so whenever we call this method it's going to give us something to compare it against and in our next tutorial we're going to be um, writing a method to compare the display modes we got to display modes your graphics card has and we're going to be finding the perfect match just like match.com so it's going to be amazing don't forget to check it out and I'll see you then so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later